Okay, so let's start. Today we will discuss about the loops. Okay, so basically there are two loops. Before coming to loop, we will come to the um, conditional statement okay now uh, this conditional statement and loops combined together they are also uh, called as uh, flow control okay so we also tell them that flow controls why we say uh, them flow control because using conditional statement and loops we control the flow of the program okay so we already know that uh, python uh, is is python is a programming language which executes the programs in the sequential order right so it executes the program in the sequential order okay now sequential order means to say so uh, let's say if 10 lines are there so first it will execute the first line, then second line, then third line, and so on till tenth line. Okay, but let's say uh, what 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 is your requirement that uh, you have different statements: statement one, statement two, statement three, and statement four. Okay, but what is your requirement is you want this statement three and statement four to be executed based on a condition okay so in the first condition what is the value you have in the first statement you have a equal to 10 and b equal to 20 okay and uh, this statement 3 and statement 4 will be executed if a is greater than b right so you will write if a is greater than b then you will execute this statement 3 and statement 4 okay if this condition is true then only you will execute statement 3 and statement 4 okay and if it is false then you will uh, go ahead and uh, uh, write uh, you will execute statement 5 statement 5 and statement 6 okay so here what we can understand from here that uh, we are controlling the flow of the program so uh, if if you will not write this condition then how the statements will be executed first the first line then second line then statement 3 statement 4 statement 5 and statement 6 this is the normal execution of the program but using this if else statement we are controlling the flow of the program so it will execute first two line as it is then it will come to the third line which is the condition it will check if the condition is true then it will execute statement 3 and the statement 4 if this is not true this is false then it will come to the statement 5 and statement 6 so this, you can see here that based on some condition we are controlling the flow of the program that's why we say it is the flow control okay so if if the condition is false then it will skip statement 3 and statement 4 it will go to the statement 5 and statement 6 directly okay so here we are controlling the flow of the program okay that's why we say it is the control for not, not only this using for loop also let's say you have statement 7 and statement 8 which you want to execute 10 times okay after executing statement 5 and 6 you want to execute statement uh, 7 and statement 8 10 times so what you will write you will run a for loop for uh, 10 times okay and when this for loop will run for 10 times this statement 7 and 8 will be executed clear so uh, this is how this is the reason we say then that it is a flow control because we are controlling the flow of the program okay now the next part is the syntax of the conditional statement in the first part we will focus on the syntax of the conditional statement okay syntax of the conditional statement now what is the syntax of the conditional statement so whenever you write a conditional statement 
So in the conditional statement, we have uh, three keywords. One is if, then elif, and then else. Okay. First, we will focus on if and else statement, and then uh, uh, what all drawbacks are there in in if and else statement. Based on that, we will learn that why we need to use elif statement. Okay. So let's say if uh, if I will take the example previous example, a is equal to no, not this. So syntax of this is uh, first you have to write the if keyword and then the condition which you want to check. Then the condition which you want to check. Okay. If this condition is evaluated as true and after condition, you have to put a column. This is the syntax means this is the rule. Okay. First if keyword, then the condition which you want to check and then a column. If this condition is true, then what you will do? You will write the statement which you want to execute. Let's say statement one and statement two, you will execute, okay? Now, this statement which you want to keep inside the if statement, Now this um, these two statement which you want to keep it inside the if condition, they should be properly indented. Okay, so when I say it should be properly indented, what does it mean? That there should be the same amount of spaces before them. Okay, now why we keep a space before them? Because see, let's say if you will talk about this if condition. So what? your requirement your requirement is that this statement one and statement two should be executed if the condition is true okay and if this condition is true then these two block of statement should be executed two set of statements should be executed now you are making a block here right means a block of code a set of uh, a set of uh, instructions you are writing here okay now this set of instructions you should mention that this all set of instruction will be executed if this condition is true if you will not keep them with a proper indentation then it will not be considered that it is coming under if condition for example you want statement 10 in statement to be executed but you will keep this statement 2 in the beginning and statement 1 with the indentation so what pvm will interpret that after condition one is true this statement should be executed okay statement one will be executed not statement two statement two will come under normal execution of the program okay so it will start executing from this line then uh, if this condition becomes true then it will execute statement one and then by default it will come to the statement two because this is the normal execution of the program okay so for example if i will open an editor So if I'm writing a program, what is my requirement? I'll be taking two numbers. And if one number, first number is greater than the second number, then I will be, I will be subtracting. If first number is greater than the second number, then I'll be subtracting num uh, number two from number one. And I'll be printing the result, okay? I'll be subtracting the number one from number two, and I'll be printing uh, the result. And if, number one is smaller than number two then i'll be subtracting number one from number two and then i'll be printing the result okay so what how i should write the program i'll be taking number one is equal to int input enter first number
this is second number okay now what my requirement is if number one is greater than number two so this is a condition which i need to write so first i'll write the if keyword and then i will write the condition which i want to check num one greater than num two okay so this is the condition i'm writing and after this i have to write the column okay so this is the syntax of if keyword okay uh if statement and once this is done once you will press the enter so few editors comes with this built-in feature that if you are going to make a block of statement then by default it will give you some indentation one level of indentation okay and uh, some editor doesn't comes with this properties like notepad plus plus you have to give the indentation manually there okay so uh, for example if i'll talk about this thorny editor it comes it with by uh, comes with it by default now you can see there is one tab space okay or there is some space from the normal uh line of the program okay normal sequence of the program so what this space says that when you will write the code here let's say i will write result is equal to num1 minus num2 okay and then again if i'm pressing enter so it is coming at the same indentation level so i will print the result okay i have done this now again if i'll press enter so it is coming at the same indentation level so it is expecting you to write the code here but since your task is done for this condition now you have to write some other condition so you will go outside and you will write here again one more if statement if so now this second if statement will come in the normal execution of the program okay and these two statement line number four and line number five will be coming under if statement if that condition will be true, then only these two statements, line number four and five will be executed. Otherwise it will not be executed, okay? And this is how we make a block. Means, uh, let's say if you have a set of statement in, 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 uh, 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 in Python, which you want to make a block out of it, then you go and do the proper indentation. And the indentation level should match with every statement. If these two statements are coming in the same if statement then they should follow the same indentation level you can say the amount of space i have given before line number four and line number five are same if you will give some extra space here let's say here so it will give you the indentation error you cannot do that they should come at the same indentation level okay so indentation level should match now next condition i will write if num1 less than num2 if this condition is true then what i should write result is equal to num2 minus num1 okay and then we should print the result okay so this is the normal execution this is how we write the conditional statement okay we as of now we have only used if statement okay now after this what we want to do we want to print the value of number one and number two okay so now this one i want to be in the normal execution or normal flow of the program so the normal flow of the program is what outside of the if statement so i'll be writing this statement outside of the if statement okay fine now if you will execute this program so how this uh, program will execute it so the normal execution is what line number one normal execution is line number two normal execution is line number three now here from line number three four and five are not normal execution they are coming inside if statement okay so it will check whether number one is greater than number two if this is true then only four and five will be executed if it is false then it will go to the directly line number six it will not execute four and five in line number six it will check if number one is less than number two if this is true then it will execute line number seven and eight if it is false then it will not execute line number seven and eight and then it will come to the line number nine and ten okay so for example if i will execute this program i'm going to debug this so you can see that how we are executing this program so first it is executing the right hand side it is asking for a number okay let's say i have entered 10. next i'm again executing this i'm going to the next line and here also i will enter 10. okay both the numbers are similar okay now again i am going to the next line and then i am executing this if block where it is checking num1 is greater than num2 so this is going to be executed as false and then it it has not executed line number four and five because these both lines are coming inside if statement okay because they are at the same indentation level now again it will check here if number one is less than number two this is also false so it will not execute this block of statement also line number seven and eight then it will directly came to the line number nine which is in the normal flow of the program it will execute number one and it will execute number two 
okay fine so it has printed the value and the program execution is completed so this is the this is how we make a block this is this is how we write the syntax it means what whatever is the syntax of if statement okay and you can combine two conditions in a single if statement let me know if you have any question about the indentation or making the blocks anyone having any question here yes neelu no question anyone else okay so this is how we write the if statement now see here what we have done we have checked so if if number 1 is greater than number 2 it should print this if number 1 is less than number 2 it should do this and if these two conditions are false then we should write some extra thing right then in that case what we should do we can write one else statement one default statement that if both the conditions are false then by default that statement will be executed so if you want to write any uh, uh, optional statement with respect to if statement that if statement is false then it will it should come to the else statement then you will write else statement and else statement doesn't take any condition it will just uh you need to write else and after that colon and then again here also you have to do the proper indentation because these blocks of coming this block of code will be coming inside the else statement so here you will print that uh number 1 is number 1 is equal to number 2 okay so now if you will run this code so and if you see here so we are executing this code we are going to enter 10 then again next 10 enter now this is false so it will not execute this is also false it will not execute it will it directly came to else part okay uh, after line number 6 it came to the else part it will print this and then it will print num1 and num2 okay so this is how the whole program is getting executed means else is for what if your condition if remember this else it this else is for which if this else is for this if which is written in line number 6 okay so wherever you write the else it will just consider the if which is written just above this else statement okay if you have written multiple if statement then it will consider only one if statement which is just above this else statement this else statement is not for this if statement this else statement is only for this if statement okay let's say if this condition is uh, uh true okay and this condition is false if this condition will become true then this condition will al already become false in that case if this is false then this this also will get executed but my requirement is i don't want to execute this else statement if this is getting true and if this is getting false i don't want this to be executed because one condition is already true for example if i run this program and if i show you with the different out input so let's see that num1 is greater than num2 so i am entering 20 here and then here i am entering 10 okay so now num1 is greater than num2 so this is executed this is true and this is executing num1 minus num2 it has printed the result in this line number 6 num1 will be less than num2 this is false okay since we have executed line number 3 and still it is coming to line number 6 okay and it is executing this so this is the uh, you know a drawback of the multiple if statement okay and this is the reason we have elif statement okay so if you have multiple conditions to check don't go and write multiple if statement instead of that if you will write elif statement so if the first condition is true then it will not go and check the every condition okay so if you will write elif here previously it was checking this condition also when this this line number 3 is true line number 3 was true still it was taking line number uh, it was taking line number 6 but now since i have written elif so it will come to line number 6 only if this condition is false if it is false then only it will come to this otherwise it will not come to this okay so now if you will execute this so i am entering 20 then 
10 then enter this is true okay so this is executed now once it is executed it directly came to the line number 11 and line number 12 it didn't execute elif and else statement okay so is it clear why we use if elif and else how we make a block how we write if statement how we write else statement anyone having any question on conditional statement I have one doubt about uh, in case of uh, one minute, uh, Nilu, your voice is not audible. Yes, please go ahead. Um, this is audible. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you want me to write in that box? Sorry. Yes, I will come to the nested if loop. I will come to that later. Okay, so just give me a few minutes. Uh, let me know if this is this is clear. How you write if elif and else statement? Okay. What about others? Aniket, Mahesh, Nilu, uh, sorry, uh, Nikhil, Prem, Rahul, Sudeep. It's clear. It's clear for everyone, right? Okay, so this is how we make, we write if elif and else statement and why we need elif statement. If you have multiple conditions to check, then you go for the elif statement. Okay, and else statement is if all your condition are false, when you are writing if elif statement with multiple conditions, if all your conditions are false, then you go for the else statement. Okay, now uh, we got a question that if we have a uh, nested if condition then what will happen so if you have nested condition doesn't matter let's say after this after this you have nested condition nested uh, if uh, uh, condition let's say if condition two okay so what you will do you will just put a colon and then again this block of whatever block of code you want to write inside uh, this if statement after this condition two will become true you will write here with the proper indentation again okay because this this whatever you will write let's say if you will write statement one and statement two so these two statements are coming in this inner if condition okay so this this will be executed remember now this statement one and statement two will be executed one this condition two is true and this condition to it will be executing line number six when when this condition is true if this is false it will not come to this okay if this is false then it will not come to this if condition okay fine similarly here also if you have elif you can check the condition now if you have multiple conditions to check inside elif few more condition a nested condition then you can go ahead and write if here not a problem if condition three then you write statement three and statement four okay fine even in the else also you can write one more condition so basically you uh, how you are making the block that should be uh, important and how you are writing the logic that comes with the practice okay where you have to keep the multi level uh, if conditions or nested if conditions that all depends on your logic so uh, for example if you want to do one program you can write one program to check whether a year is a leap year or not whether an year is leap year or not okay you got the question everyone you have to check whether a year is leap year or not using if else condition you need to write so the condition for that is if a number is divisible by 4 okay then you have to check whether the number is divisible by 100 if it is divisible by 4 and 100 both then you have to check whether it is divisible by 400 so if it is divisible by all these three then it will be a leap year okay so it will be a leap year okay now let's say if a year is divisible by 4 and divisible by 100 but not divisible by 400 okay then not leap year Similarly, if a number is divisible by 4, 
and not divisible by 100, then it is a leap year. Else again, it is not a, otherwise it is not a leap year. But uh, if it's only getting divisible by 4, then do it's a leap year. So we don't have to check for the 100 and 400 because they both are the divisible by 4. Um, what, uh, one minute. Yes, tell me what you are saying. I was saying that, that you are checking that number is divisible by 4, then 100, and then 400. Mm -hmm. it, but only if it's so getting you, divisible you by 4. Uh, you write the program. Okay, I will give you the set of inputs. Check with that. Okay, because one program can be written in the many ways. Okay, so you write the program. We will take uh, uh, two minutes. Okay. And uh, then we will check uh, with the input, the set of input which I have. I will give you that input. Check with that input. Sure. Okay. Everyone, try this. Just two minutes of time. Is it done? Anyone has done this? So first what I checked, I checked whether the year is divisible by four or not. If year percentile four, okay. 
so how you check whether this divisibility uh, uh, so you check whether the so this percentile gives you the remainder okay so you will take one year you will save it in the variable called year and you will divide it by 4 and you will try to find the remainder if the remainder is equal to 0 then you will say it is completely divisible okay and now we if that year is divisible by 4 okay we can easily say it is a leap year okay so i can print here print it is a leap year okay but there is a problem there is one year 1700 okay if you will divide this uh, year 1700 by 4 so it will be divisible by 4 but 1700 is not a leap year okay 1700 is not a leap year so here we have a catch what we have to check if it is divisible by 4 then we have to do one more check before writing this that we have to do one more check is if year is divisible by 100 or not okay if it is divisible by 100 then also we cannot say that it is a leap year okay after this we have to check one more condition what that if it is divisible by 100 then whether it is divisible by 400 or not if year percentile 400 sorry this will be equal to equal to zero okay so if it is divisible by 400 then we can say yes it is a leap year okay fine and now let's say if it is not divisible by 400 clear if it is not divisible by it is divisible by 100 but not divisible by 400 then here we will write as print year is not leap year okay now come to this so let's say i have entered 1700 1700 divided by 4 it is true right it will come here 1700 div divisible by 100 this is also true but 1700 divisible by 400 this is false so it will come to the else part correct fine so it will say year is not a leap year now let's say i will take one year which is divisible by 4 for example one year which is um, uh 2012 okay so 2012 is divisible by 4 this is true okay but 2012 is not divisible by 100 okay so we have to write here that it is a leap year okay before coming to this condition we have to write here that it is not a leap it is a leap year correct so instead of if this condition is false so for 2012 this condition will become false so we have to write one else condition here okay and we will print that year is leap year okay and if this condition becomes false let's say if the top condition becomes false then that is not a leap year right so we will write one else condition here else print year is not Okay. Now let's let's see this. Let's see this program with different input. Enter 2012. Year as 2012. 2000 divisible by 4. Yes. If you will divide 2012 by 4, it will give you remainder as 0. Okay. So it will be completely divisible by 4. Now come to this. So if 2012 is divisible by 100, this is false. So if this is false, it will come to the else of this if. What is the corresponding else of this if? The corresponding else of this if is this else. Okay. So it will come here and it will print year is leap year. Okay. Now take one more year. Let's say I will take 1800. 1800 divisible by 4. Yes, it is true. Now 1800 is divisible by 100. Yes, it is true. Remember 1800 is not a leap year. Okay. So 1800 divisible by 100. It is true. 1800 divisible by 400. This is false. You cannot divide 1800. Means if you divide 1800 by 400, remainder will not be 0. So if this is false, then it will come to the corresponding else statement. It will come here and it will print it is not a leap year. Okay. Take one more year, 1600. 1600 divisible by 4. This is true. 
1600 divisible by 100 this is also true 1600 divisible by 400 this is also true so it will print it is a leap year okay fine have you understood this question so but if we give now 1700 then it will say it's a leap year but it's not a leap year uh, 1700 will not give you a leap year. It will give you it is not a leap year. Let's try. Right? Hmm? Okay. But it is divisible by 4, right? Ah, it, so if it is divisible by 4, then you have to check one more thing on top of that, whether it is divisible by 100 or not. And if it okay. is divisible by 100 also, then finally you have to check whether it is divisible by 400 or not. Based on that, you will be writing the condition, okay? Clear? Tell me who have not understood this program, I will explain it again. So I will come to this percentile. Okay. What is this percentile? There are different arithmetic operators. Okay. What all arithmetic operators are there? So the arithmetic operators we have. The arithmetic operators we have is addition, subtraction, multiplication, Then this is called floor div uh, float division, F-L-O-A-T, float division. This is called floor division. Two types of division are there. Then this is called modulo operator. Okay. Then this is called exponent. Okay. So these all are the different arithmetic operators we have over here. Okay, so now let's see all of them one by one. So plus and subtraction, you know, uh, if you want to add two numbers, you can do plus. If you want to subtract two numbers, you can do minus. If you want to multiply two numbers, you can do multiplication. Okay, now we will understand these four operations. Okay, so let's see this. Now let's say we have one number A is equal to 10 and b is equal to 3 okay now if you will write print a single slash b remember this is called float division okay this is called float division and if you will write this is called float division okay if you will write print a double slash b then it will give you the floor value next we have modulo operator okay next we have modulo operator what is modulo operator so if you will write print a percentile b this percentile is the sign of modulo okay modulo operator okay next what we have uh, we have exponent Okay. Now this exponent, if you will write a double star b. Okay. So what output we will get here? When you will divide, when you will use single slash, so 10 divided by 3 will give you the float value. It will try to divide like when you uh, write 10 upon 3, 10 upon 3. Okay. So in that case, what you get? You get the exact output in the floating point number. 3.3333333 and so on correct so this is the exact division you get and it is a floating point value that's why we say it is a float division okay when you use single slash you get the value in the decimal point okay now float division what is float division when you divide 10 by 3 so what is the quotient you will get the quotient here only the quotient when you will divide 10 by 3 you will get only the quotient and that quotient is the floor value okay what do you mean by floor value so in mathematical 
terms, there are two values. When you divide a number, you get two values. Uh, sorry, uh, you get, uh, you have two values of a respective number. Let's say if you have 10.5. So what is the floor value of 10.5? It is 10. What is the steel value of 10.5? It is 11. So floor value, let's say if you have any decimal point number, and if you are trying to get the floor value of that, then the floor value will be the nearest lowest whole number. Floor value is what? Nearest lowest whole number of the decimal point number. And uh, steel value is what? Steel value is nearest highest whole number. Okay. So for 10.5, what will be the nearest highest whole number? It will be 11. For 10.5, what will be the nearest lowest whole number? It will be 10. So nearest lowest whole number is called floor value. Nearest highest floor uh, whole value is called the seal value. Okay. So in this A double slash B, we get the floor value. For example, if you write 10.9, for 10.9, the floor value will be 10. If you want to get the floor value, there is a function called floor. You can get it. So there is, uh, let me open this CMD. This floor uh, function is there in the math module. So you need to import this math module, import math. Okay. Now you can write math.floor. Okay. Inside this math.floor, if you will write 10.9 uh, or let's say 10.9, so it will give you the floor value as 10. And similarly, if you will write math.seal and here you will write 10.1. Okay, so in this case, you will get as 11. Okay, so seal value means top nearest highest whole number and floor value means what nearest lowest whole number. Okay, so for 10.1 nearest highest whole number is what 11. Okay, it will write 11. And for this floor value nearest lowest floor uh, whole number is what 10. So it has written 10. Okay, so this is floor, this is seal. Now you try to get the floor value in this case. When you divide double slash, you get the floor value. Or you can say you get the quotient. So this is called the floor division. Now this modulo operator will always give you the remainder. It will always give you the remainder. Okay. That's why it is called the uh, uh, modulo operator. Okay. So when you will divide 10 by 3, what remainder you will get here in this case? You will get 1. Okay. And this is called the exponents. Means here basically it works like a raised to the power b okay so if you will write 10 double star 3 so 10 uh, to the power 3 will be raised okay so the the finally output you will be getting here is 1000 here 1 here you will get 3 here you will get 3.33333 okay so this is the output so these all are the different mathematical operations we have Everyone is clear on this? Anyone having any question? On arithmetic operators? Or if else conditions? I'm not getting the response from everyone. Uh, I can see 11, 10 candidates are there, but I'm getting the response from only two people. What happened guys? Is it so hard you are not able to understand? Or you don't want to respond? So can you, exp uh, what you asked, can you say again? I asked, is there any question from your side? Please respond. If there is no question, either you, you have chat or chat box where you can write yes or no, or you have mic, you can unmute yourself and you can respond at least. Because I'm not a robot. Okay, I'm expecting something from your side. Yes or no? The, the class never goes like this. Okay, so if you are attending the class, be attentive. At least I should see. Okay, so people are listening. Otherwise, you can listen to the videos, no? Yeah, no, no doubt. 
okay so okay so we do uh, we have covered this if uh, condition sir i have a doubt yes please uh, can you just um, once again explain the difference between modulo operator and uh, float uh, float of float division and modulo operation yeah. so see float division gives you when you will divide a number by uh when you will use this single slash okay this single slash and double slash both are used for the division but what is the difference between single slash and double slash is single slash when you will divide it will give you the value it will try to divide the number completely and it will give you the value if the number is completely divisible it will give you the value in the floating point number and if it is not divisible also it will give you the number in the floating point number for example let's say if you will write if you will write 10 divided by 2 in this case what will be the output it will be 5 right here the output you are getting as 5.0 okay so see if you will divide it by uh, 10 double slash 2 okay so what will be the output here 5 because the co uh, re, uh, quotient here in dividing 10 slash 2 or the floor value here is 5 okay so in this case you are getting only integer value but in the case of 10 slash 2 it is trying to divide the number completely and after dividing if it is completely divisible then it will give you in terms of dot 0 and if it is not divisible then it will give you in the floating point number like 5.12345 something or in the case let's say 10 slash 3 if you will do so it will give you what 3.33333 when you write 10 upon 3 so what will be your output 10 upon 3 the output will be 3.33333 right this is the same thing okay so here the output will be 3.33333 but when you write 10 percentile 2 means modulo operation so in this case you get the remainder okay here only remainder you will get in this case what will be the remainder it will be zero let's say if you will write 10 rem, uh, uh, modulo 3 so in this case what will be the remainder it will be it will be 1 let's say if i'll write 10 percentile 4 so what will be the remainder here 2 so percentile always gives you the remainder single division if you will do it will try to divide the number completely and it will give you the value in the or output in the floating point number okay and if you will try to divide the number using double slash then it will give you always the quotient and the floor value okay that's why it is called the floor division okay and Un yeah understood thanks okay. anyone else okay so now i will come to the i will come to the loop okay so we have discussed if else condition you may go ahead and write a few program on this so uh, like one program is there you can uh, write one program where you will be taking the number numerical number from the user some integer value from 0 to 9 the range will be only 0 to 9 okay user will enter 0 to 9 any one value he will enter and whatever value he enters you have to print the that value in the words let's say for example first the question is the user will enter the value from 0 to 9 okay so the first condition is the user has to enter the value from 0 to 9 this is one condition then let's say if he has entered 1 okay so you you have to give in the output as o n e okay and if he enters let's say 8 so you have to write e i g s t okay like this so you have to uh, give the output in the word okay this is one thing second thing if he enters any number outside of this range let's say he enters 10 so in that case you will say that number is not in the range okay you will print this okay so uh, using if else you can write this uh, one program there are other programs also if you want to practice you can get it in the uh, class assignment okay when you will be attending the normal class there you will be getting the assignment now let's come to the loop okay now we have two kinds of loop here one is for loop and one is while loop but before coming to the loop we will discuss one more data structure that is the derived data structure that is called the range function 
okay now what what is range function range function is also a sequence okay now yesterday we have discussed about sequence that if any data type or if any data structure is a sequence then what are properties it will be having it will be having the ordered collection of the elements this is one thing second thing indexing is allowed slicing is allowed then uh, uh, what else um yes uh, the insertion order will be preserved okay uh, so these all are the basic properties of a sequence right and you can run the loop also over it this one also we we saw uh, in the concept yesterday okay so these were the five properties of a sequence now whenever we write the range sequence so let's see what is the sequence of a range what what exactly it does so range basically is used to create a range of values okay let's say if you want to create values from 0 to 10 okay 0 is included 10 is excluded means it will create the values from 0 to 9 and uh, you want to access them okay so how you can do that using range you can easily so if you have a sequential order a sequential order of numbers you can easily create it using range and there should not be any break so there should be a specific pattern let's say if you want to create uh, even numbers from 1 to 100 you can do it using range if you want to create uh, odd numbers from um, uh, 1 to 100 you can do it using range okay if you want to take every third number uh, from 1 to 100 you can create it using range okay so uh, or if you want to create uh, 10 numbers uh, in the sequential order from 0 to 10 or uh, uh, let's say from 21 to 50 then also you can do that using range now what exactly it is so basically we need to understand the first the sequence for that uh, sorry syntax for that so the syntax for range function is first you need to write the begin then you need to write the end and then you need to write the step okay so this is similar like uh, uh, this is similar like your slicing now what what do you mean by begin so begin tells you that from where you have to start creating the numbers okay from where the range will start creating the numbers and end will tell that till what number you want to create it okay till what number you want to create it let's say in the begin if you will give one and end you will give 10 so it will start creating the numbers from one including and it will create till 10 excluding 10 is excluding so it will create till 9 okay so and if you will write uh, step is here optional you may not write step here that is completely optional uh, and again so the properties of step are similar to the step in the slicing step can be positive and negative direction both okay now let's say if you want to create the number let's say this is the number line okay on this you have this is zero this is plus infinity and this is minus infinity okay now when you keep the step as positive when step is positive then the number by default will be created from left to right direction okay left to right direction so you can create a number from minus 5 to plus 5 also but step you have to take it as positive because positive tells you that you have to traverse from left to right and if the step is negative then you will be creating the number from right to left direction so you can create the number in the reverse order also for example 5 to minus 5 or 0 to minus 10 you can create in that order also in that case step you have to give as negative okay so is this clear positive and negative step yes okay now what you have to do you have to create a number okay let's say you have you not a number a sequence of values okay now what kind of values let's say you want to create a number uh, create a sequence of values from 0 to 10 so what what all things you have to mention here in this begin you have to mention end you have to mention so let's say i will give begin as 0 
end i want to create till 10 means 10 will be included so i'll be writing end value as plus 1 so it will be 11 means it will start creating the values from 0 till 11 11 will be exclusive and i want to do it in the forward direction means from left to right 0 to 11 from left to right so i will uh, mention the step as 1 okay once i will do that and if i will print this so it will create the range object remember in python 3.8 range creates a range object okay so it is a generator it is a generator okay if you will run this so you are getting one range object and it is a generator if you want the values to be available for you to use then you can run either the for loop or you can write you can write this range function inside a list function it will create a list of those values now if you will run this so you will get you will get a list of those values starting from 0 to 10 all these 11 values are created so you can see that it is starting from 0 going till 10 because of end is 11 and step is 1 so it is taking every number okay every uh, uh, number in the that in this range okay now let's say if i want to create a values from minus 11 to plus 11 so i will mention minus 11 to plus 11 and then if i will run this so it will create the values from minus 11 to plus 11 all these values are created now i want all the values which are uh, every alternate number or i want so minus 11 is what is is kind of odd number right so if i will take two here so minus 11 will be included and after this after this minus 13 will be taken then minus uh, sorry uh, minus 11 then minus 9 minus 7 minus 5 minus 3 minus 1 and then 1 right then 3 5 so every odd number we will be taking here so if i will run this so you will get the list of odd numbers between this range all the odd numbers okay fine similarly let's say if i want to create all the even numbers between this range so the first odd number uh, even number after minus 11 is 10 so i have to write here 10 and from minus 10 to 11 whatever even numbers are there all the even numbers will be created here so you can see we are getting the list of all the even numbers okay now let's say if you want to create a, a, a list of values starting from 21 to 30 so how you can do that begin you have to mention 21 uh, and then this one you have to mention as 31 so starting from 21 till 30 all the even values will be created if you run this all the even values will be created uh, all the odd values will be created because 21 is the odd value if you want the even number then begin you have to mention as uh, the first even number after 21 so this will be your all, list of all the even numbers okay and if you will mention here one so it will be all the numbers in this range okay not a single number will be dropped similarly you can change to one two three anything now let's say if i will do this same thing with the negative numbers so if i want to create all the numbers from plus 11 to minus 11 then what i should write here in the place of begin end and step can anyone tell me 11 to minus 11 in the reverse order what will be my begin end and step Anyone? 11 to minus 11. What will be begin, end and step? I want to create those numbers. Uh, can you put uh, 11 as begin, uh, end as my, uh, minus 12 and uh, step as minus 1? 11 and then this will be minus 12. Yeah, and step is minus 12. So if you will do this, you are getting all those numbers in the reverse order. Okay. Let's say if I want to generate all the values from minus 1 to minus um, 10, then in the reverse order, minus 1 to minus 10.
माइनस वन टू माइनस टेन माइनस वन माइनस इलेवन माइनस वन यस सो दिस विल बी माइनस वन दिस विल बी माइनस इलेवन एंड दिस विल बी माइनस वन सो इफ यू विल डन दिस यू विल गेट ऑल दो वैल्यूज दिस विल बी माइनस वन okay now let's say if i want to create the values from 10 to 0 10 to 0 in the reverse order 10 to 0 0 should be included Uh, begin is ten. Uh, end is minus one. End is minus one. And uh, minus one. Okay. So this is how you can create a sequence. So now I hope range is clear. How you can create the different sequences. Generally, we don't go and write the list before this because range uh, itself is a sequence. Okay. We just if we want to see the values, then we write the list before this. But if you will not write the list before this, then it will not show you the list or it will not show you the sequence. But it is internally it is a sequence. Okay. so you don't have to bother about it and you don't have to write list explicitly if you will write this internally it will create the sequence okay but the only difference is in this case it is not returning a list it is returning a range object and what is a list anything which you keep inside the square bracket that is considered as a list so above all three values are list and this range is the range object it is not a list but it is a sequence okay it is a sequence so if if anything is a sequence means what we can run the loop over it this is one property we can do indexing we can do slicing we can do uh, uh, we can do uh, this is an ordered collection and the uh, ordered will be preserved okay so all these are the properties we have seen so if this range is a sequence then all these properties are also true in this case for example let's say if i will write a is equal to range of okay so one thing i forgot to mention that here begin and step are optional okay if you will not write if you will write only one argument 10 okay by default begin will be taken as zero step will be taken as plus one okay if you will write only one argument in this case so it will be taken begin will be taken as zero and step will be taken as one and end will be taken as the argument which you have passed okay so here it will create the range object from zero to Nine means it will create a, a, a sequence of zero to nine numbers. Okay, means ten number zero to nine. Now, if you want to do the indexing here, you can easily do. Um, if you will write a of minus one, okay, and if you will run this, let me comment this. If you will run this, so you will be getting the output nine. Okay, because this is the last value we have taken till ten. End is ten, so it will create till nine only, right? so the minus 1 is 9 okay fine so now if if it is a sequence then we can run a for loop also over it okay for example list is a sequence okay so if list is a sequence we can run a loop over it okay how we can run the loop over it so there is a for loop and while loop okay uh, uh, sir yes i have a question uh in um, range is it possible to get the uh, prime numbers from 1 to 100 no no prime number you have to write the logic because prime number doesn't have a proper sequence okay 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 thank you like one is prime number then uh, sorry two is prime number and then uh, three is prime number then five is prime number then 7 is prime number so there is not a proper sequence between them like sequence uh, sorry uh, uh, what you can say uh, yes you can say it is not a sequenced value right so after 2 there is a gap like after 2 3 but after 3 there are, there is a gap of 2 right so it is coming 5 then after 5 there is a gap of 2 7 after 7 the next prime number is after a gap of 4 11 okay so uh, this cannot be uh, defined in the uh, range okay okay now we will come to the list uh, uh, string we have discussed the string let's say we have a string a is equal to python okay now this python 
is indexed, right? So this is a sequence. Sequence means it is ordered collection and the indexes are there 0, 1, 2, 3. So whenever you have a sequence, a sequence means what? It is a collection of element, okay? There are number of element inside a sequence. So if a sequence having a number of element and if you will run a loop over it, for loop over it, then that for loop will run on every element. Okay, will it will take one element from that sequence and then it will do the operation, whatever operation you want to do. Okay, so for example, what we want to do, we want to pick every element from this sequence. Okay, let's say first we want to pick P and then Y, then T, then H, then O, and then N. And we want to print them in the vertical order, right? So first it will print P, then Y, just below P it will print Y, then after Y it will print T, then after T it will print H and so on, right? So how you can do that? There is one option you can do indexing. You can write six indexes like print A of zero, right? Then then you will write A of one, then you will write A of two, then you will write A of three. Okay, and so on. So if you will run this code, so you will get this this order, right? But see, here you are writing basically six line of code. If I want to print all of them, you are going to write the six line of code and you are repeating one thing. See, in every line number 62 to line number 65, in every line, everything is fixed. Just one thing is changing is the index. One is zero, one, two, three, and so on, right? So this, when you have everything constant and only one thing is changing you can easily run the loop over it okay so you can run the loop over here if you want to access the element itself you can directly go for the loop it depends whether you want to go for the for loop or while loop they have the different significance as of now i will run the for loop now what is the syntax of for loop so the syntax of for loop is first of all you have to write for then after this you have to write a variable name and after this variable name you have to use in operator Okay, in is an operator in Python, which tells whether this variable is in the sequence or not. Okay, so after this in, you have to write one sequence here. Just a second. So we have to write a sequence here for where in sequence. So basically this is going to how it, how this loop will run. So internally this variable is going to store only one value at a time. So this variable will go inside this sequence. It will pick the first element and then it will come inside this loop and it will do the operation on that. So we will do only one line of operation. We will print where. Okay. Now before that i will write here sequence name so there, there is no variable called sequence i will write a here because it is having sequence python okay now if you will run this code so you will get the values python okay now how this is running so for now before that let's come and discuss about the uh, this membership operator in and not in so there is something called membership operator and there are two uh, operators in this one is in and one is um not in okay now how this works so in and not in are basically used to check whether an element is a member of the sequence or not remember it works only on the sequence it will not work on any other data type like it will not work on integer it will not work on float it will not work on complex number it will only work on the sequences like what are sequences you have string you have bytes you have byte arrays you have range you have list you have tuple and even it will work on the mapping also, like sets and dictionary, okay? So on all these data structure, this membership operator will work. So basically what it does, it will take the element and it will check whether that element is the part of that sequence or not. For example, I have one sequence, sequence is equal to um, Python class, okay? I will write here, Python's class, okay, fine. Okay, now if you will check the sequence, so this is the Python's class. Now, if I want to check whether S is available in this sequence or not. So I will write here, 
using membership operator we can easily check it will return you membership operation will always return you true or false okay so i want to check whether s is part of this sequence or not means a sub string or sub sequence is part of this main sequence or not so you can directly write s in sequence now this s is not a variable it is a string so you have to keep it in the quotation okay i have kept it in this quotation so it will return true because s is available it doesn't matter how many times it is available or where it is available if it is available it will give you true so if you will press enter here it will give you uh, bracket so it, it is giving you true okay similarly let's say if i will write here if i will write here this will it be true or false true it will be true because apostrophe s is there right so you can pay you can check one element is there in the sequence or you can check a group of element is also there in the sequence or not okay so if it is there then it will return true and then it will uh, print the value so it will return true but let's say if you will check this um os okay os in sequence will it be printing true or false false because this is not the part of the sequence os combined together is not the part of the sequence okay um os combined together is not the part of the sequence okay it will print false similarly let's say if i will print ps will it be printing true or false 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 because p and s is available p is available in the beginning s is available at the end okay but p and s are not available combined together okay so it will return you false okay and not in just opposite so if you will write uh, uh, not in wherever uh, in is there and it is returning true so it will return false and wherever it is returning false it will return true okay so just opposite of it okay now uh, uh, it depends on you how you are using it so now if you will come to this for loop so what it is doing here it is going here and it is going inside this how about ns yes it will be true this is what you are asking right so it is true it is available no okay fine now if you will come to this so for var in a okay now it will come here and it will check variable in a it will first go inside this okay here it is not going to do that membership operation okay it is actually internally it is going and picking one element from this sequence a is what a is a sequence and when you write for before the membership operation then the operation changes a little bit okay it will work like the same it will go and it will check whether this uh, 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 means in operators check whether uh, this sequence is available or not but here you have not assigned any value to the variable so here you are not going to check whether this element is available in that or not actually internally it will go inside that sequence it will pick in the first uh, like uh, uh, the iteration will happen means for it will go uh, inside the sequence for how many times till the length of the sequence means all these elements are exhausted means all these elements are used okay uh, since then it will run till then it will run so what it will do in the first iteration this variable will go inside a it will pick the first element means variable will become p and it will come and execute line number 63 it will print p then it will come back in the loop okay and then it will go again in the sequence and it will take the next element which will be y so now y will be stored in the variable and it will come to line number 63 it will print y then again it will go back into the for loop and there it will take the third element t and it will store it in the variable where and then it will come to line number 63 and it will print t and so on till all the elements are exhausted means once it will at the end when variable will become n it will come to line number 63 it will print n and then after that it will again go back to the loop and it will check whether do we have any other element after n since it is not having any element after n so it will come out of the loop 
so let's say if after this for loop if you have uh, any other statement to execute so it will execute after this end of for loop okay so if you will run this so it will print the last once the n is printed after that it will come out of the loop and it will do the normal execution of the program okay so let me know if you have any question here how you can run the for loop on the string or on a sequence no clear everyone is it clear yes okay so now since we, what we have seen python is a sequence which is having six elements inside this so it, this loop is running or this 63 line is running six times right so if we will take a range here range is also a sequence if we will take a range and for range also what we will do we will create a sequence of six values okay so i will write six so from where to where it will be creating from zero to five isn't it clear we are creating from zero to five this sequence range so what will happen first time variable will become zero okay then it will come and print zero then again it will go back it will uh, uh, become one then it will print one then two then three four five and so on and once it will print five after that it will go back we don't have any other element it will come out and it will print end of for loop okay so you can see we are printing zero one two three four five so now can we access this python can we get this output python using this code okay so because see variable is what it is nothing but 0 1 2 3 4 5 and we know that string also have index starting from 0 from left hand side okay so if we will write a of where so in the first iteration where will be 0 so what it will become a of 0 it will print p then in the next iteration where will become 1 so a of 1 it will print y in the next iteration where will become 2 it will print a of 2 which is t and so on right so if you will run this you will get python again in this order okay clear everyone yes can you execute the same in while loop yes we will come to the while loop nikhil just wait for a few minutes uh, if this is done then let's do some program Those who have attended my uh, uh, class till today, they will be able to do this question. Okay. So input is this, output is this. Okay. And there is a specific logic in that. How you will be doing that? Think about it. You can tell me the logic also. That is also fine. Okay. But you can just let me know what is the logic at least. Sorry, sir, I didn't get the question. Can you repeat it? I have written input. Input is Python. Output is this. You have to give me this output based on this input. What is the logic for this? So we can run a for loop and uh, using ASCII character uh, recognition, we can return R um, because P is, uh, I don't know the ASCII character, but uh, it will skip one ASCII character, then print R. Correct. I mean, for, yeah. uh, for P, for, uh, it will print R. Then uh, similarly, y, uh, y for a. Okay, yeah, good, very good. So, same thing we have done. First, what we will do, we will run a for loop, okay, on input Python. So, first time the variable will become p, then we need to get the ASCII equivalent of p, means every letter, right? So, which function we have to get the ASCII equivalent?
anyone which function we have yesterday we have done this ord ord ordinal right ord will give you the um ask equivalent of the character or you can say alphabet okay then what you have to do you have to add two into that let's say if it is a so in a you have to you uh, for a you have to give c right so in a if you will add two for a it is 65 66 67 c is 67 so in 65 if you will add two it will become 67 that's what we are doing here if you see here p after dropping the next character we are taking the th uh, uh, third character right p drop the q and take the third character r similarly y drop z and take a right so you have to do this okay now for y it will it won't be a it will be different uh, uh, t h o n yes, this is fine one minute for y O R D of Y. This will be one twenty one. So C H R of one twenty three. It will be this bracket. What this bracket? Middle bracket or smaller bracket? This is middle bracket. So here the output will just change a little bit. This will be middle bracket. Okay. So it will be like this. Okay. Now, so if you will keep on adding this, it will give you the finally this output. Okay. So you have to, what you have to do, you have to add two into that ASCII standard and then you have to convert it back into the character using CHR function. After getting the character, you have to do the concatenation. Okay. So concatenation is applied on sequences okay let's say if you have two sequence for example you have two sequence a is equal to python and b is equal to class okay so concatenation happens between two sequence if you will write a plus b so it will concatenate these two strings and it will give you the output. So basically it will combine these two strings and it will give you the Python class, which is combined. Okay. So uh, we, we have to do this concatenation over here also. Okay. So let's do that. What we will do, we will take this uh, Python here. We will take a, okay, for variable in a. Then we have to write ORD underscore value is equal to ORD of variable. We will get the ordinal value of variable. Now we need to increment it by two. So we can write incremented ordinal value is equal to ORD underscore value plus two. Correct. Once we will get this, we need to get the corresponding character for that. So for that, which function we have? CHR, right? So we will write CHR underscore value is equal to CHR of IN underscore ORD underscore value, okay? So we will get the character. Now we want one resultant output. Okay. So that will be the output string. So basically we will take one empty output string outside of this loop and we will initialize it out underscore str is equal to empty string. Okay. Once we will do that, what we will do, we have got the character here. So we will do the concatenation. OUT underscore str equal to OUT underscore STR plus um, CHR underscore value. Okay. So finally, we will get the output string and we can print the 
output stream. Okay, now you run this. Are you getting the same thing? Yes. Anyone who is not able to understand this question or this program? Um, can you explain this once again? Okay, so first we need to see the output. So what was my input and what was my output? This is the input and this is the output, okay? So if you will see here, there is one order in the input and output. After P, we are dropping Q, taking R. After Y, we are dropping the Z and taking the next character. So in the ASCII, after Z, it comes. So for Y, it is 121. For Z, it is 122. And 123 is what? This bracket, okay? Then after T, we are dropping P, U, and we are taking V, okay? So you have to take every second character after the character which is there in the input, okay? So you have to find the relation here that this relation you will be able to find with the ASCII value only. So you have to check whether the ASCII value of P and what is the ASCII value of R, then ASCII value of Y, ASCII value of this, ASCII value of P, ASCII value of V. And after that, you will find the relation that there is a gap of two between the ASCII value of P and between the ASCII value of R. So basically you have to get the ASCII value of P and you have to add two into that. After adding two, you have to convert that ASCII value into the character and then you have to uh, find the output. So you have to append this R or you have to add this R in, into the output string. So what is happening? First time where in A. So first time where will become what? P. Okay. So ordinal value of where P will become what? 121. 121 is what? 121 uh, is stored in ordinal value. Now we will come here. We what we are doing? We are we need to add two into that. So we have added two into that. It will become one twenty three. So it is stored in uh, in underscore odd underscore value. Now we have to convert this one twenty three into the character. This will give me R. That is stored in character value. And then we have to uh, concatenate it in the output string because we want this whole string, right? So we have kept output string is empty. Empty string plus R will become R. So R is stored in output string. As of now, my output string is what R. Then from here again, I will come back to this variable will become Y. So ordinal value of Y is what? Ordinal value of Y, it will check. Sorry, P was not 121. P was something. Y is 121. So ordinal value will become 121. In ordinal value will become 123. And character value will become this uh, bracket, middle bracket, opening middle bracket. And then we will uh, concatenate. Output string is R, R plus this middle bracket, it will become R middle bracket and it will be stored in output string. Then again, I will go back, variable will become T. Again, it will do the same operation and finally it will do the concatenation after R bracket, the V will get added. So this process will keep on happening till N and then finally we will get the output string. Clear? So you can debug this program and then probably you can check this. Okay. If you have understood this, you can do this one. So I'm pasting the questions. This is one. Um, this is another one. There are many others. Uh, probably you can get it through the assignment, okay? So you can work on this similar kind of problem. Okay, fine. Now, same thing if I will ask you to do using range, same problem if I will ask you to do using range, how you can do that? So in place of A, you are basically, what you are doing? you are accessing every element from this sequence Python, right? A. So you are first accessing P, then Y, then T, then H, then O, then N. 
okay so this thing you can do using index also so instead of writing a here you can write you can create a range of a okay so you will there are six element you will write six here so zero to five will be created and instead of writing here where what you will be writing you will be writing a of where you will basically will be doing the indexing okay and rest all thing will remain same okay fine so what we can see here that for loop is applicable in the cases if you want to run the for loop or if you want to do the operation on every element of the sequence then you can directly run the for loop over the sequence this is one condition second if you already know in advance that how many times you have to run the loop so here we know that we have to run the loop for six times so we have taken the range okay now let's say if you don't know that how many times you have to run you have you may have to run 10 times 20 times you don't know so in that case until and unless one condition is getting false you have to run a loop so in that case you have the access of while loop okay now what is the syntax of while loop so first you have to write the while and then you have to write the condition okay now until and unless this condition will be true this loop will run so whatever you will write here this statement will be executed until this condition will become false okay now in this you have to uh, uh, sometime you have to do the initialization so for initialization you can take the uh, one initialization variable i equal to zero and then you have to increment it also i equal to i plus one okay i equal to i plus one you are incrementing it and you are initializing it and then you are checking the condition let's say you have to run this loop for 10 times so you will write i less than 10 or uh, yeah i less than 10 so when i will become 9 it will till 9 it will run once i will become 10 10 is not less than 10 it will become false and it will come out of the loop so what you will do you will basically execute this print i okay so now if you will run this you will see this loop is running and it is printing all those numbers from 0 to 9 okay so if i will ask you to print python a is equal to python using while loop okay so how you can do that you already have index i equal to 0 you just have to access every element of i and already this increment is happening and you have to you don't have to check for 10 times you have to check for six times okay so once i will become five after that it should not run for six it should not run so till five you will be checking and here instead of printing i you will write a of i okay now if you will run this so you will get the same python okay and same this operation also whatever you have done you you can do using while loop Okay. okay. Uh, in for loop, uh, when uh, you are not using index indexing, then uh, var was pointer or uh, how was it incrementing itself? No, the var, uh, var uh, sorry, uh, increment, uh, actually it keeps a track. Uh, there is no concept of pointer, first of all, in um, okay. Python. Okay. okay. So basically what it keeps a track of it it keeps a track basically it is a generator right a range is a generator okay and when you, you run a for loop in the generator so there is a yield keyword which you will be learning in the function and yield is used to remember the last state where we left off okay where we left off there it will go back okay it is not a pointer basically it is it is a kind of memory structure in the python you can say that is uh, that is basically will be learning in the generator okay so first time when var is becoming p so after doing this operation when it is going back there it has yielded p there is a yield statement you will be writing it will yield p and it will remember that I, last time i have yielded p so i have to come back here and i have to uh, execute the statement after this p okay so it will take the next element y automatically okay so that is about the ill statement which you will be learning in the function part the internal implementation you will be learning either in the classes there in the normal classes if you don't learn when i will come for the advanced classes you can ask me whatever doubts you have about generator or about this how the for loop is implemented internally all those things i will tell you okay don't worry about 
Okay. Anyone having any question here? In for loop, while loop. If you don't have any question, you can try executing this same program using while loop. Or if you want a different program, I can give a different program also. Uh, the pattern you have given uh, in the previous classes, uh, you have said that you can write the uh, pyramid pattern in one single line. Hmm. One single I think it was in the last batch. Yes, it was last. Yes. Yes, uh, those, uh, uh, this, I will tell you. This pyramid pattern, right? Uh, on a single for loop. Yes. This pyramid pattern, right? You can do it using single for loop. How you can do that? Let's see this. So for i in, how many times you have to print? Uh, five times, right? So you will write range six. Okay. Now, if you see, there is a pattern in this. If you will see at the last line, there is no space before this star. Okay. And five stars are there. And after every star, there is a space. Okay. Now, just above this line, if I will uncomment this. So there is no space be uh, before this star. There is one space before this means in the fourth line, there is one space in the third line, there is two space in the uh, second line, it is uh, three space and in the first line, there is four space. Okay. There are four spaces. Okay. And only one star is there. So basically here also there is a pattern and in this star also there is a pattern. So basically first we are printing the four spaces, then one star. Then in the next line, we are uh, reducing the space by uh, uh, one means from four to we are coming to three. Right. And then we are printing it by uh, this star by two. Okay. So what we have to do here, first we have to print a space. So we can write space printed by how many times? So it will be printed by into Five minus I minus one. Okay. And then comma end is equal to same thing. Okay. And then here we will print. Star space into I plus one. First time I will be zero, I plus one, yes. The next time it will be two, I plus two, and then here it will be uh, one minus one, two, three spaces. Here it will be four spaces, yes. This is it. So let's see this. getting it so last one is running we have one two three four this one is if one. if case is it one uh, needed i think 
sorry one if if case is needed no no if last not without if you can do uh, this is coming where it is coming i in range 6 0 to uh, 0 to 5 if i will take 5 5 minus yes it will be i will take 5 yes 5 okay so you can do it using single loop also uh, but i need six six lines then range six uh, it will be it will be problematic uh, no the length six also it will be fine here you have to in that case here you have to write six ah uh, yes yes okay I have actually implemented this one, but uh, I forgot to give a space after the star. Mm -hmm. No, it's fine. See, the thing is, program can be done in many ways. Okay. Yes. But yes. one thing you have to remember always that when you are going for the interview, uh, the complexity is the most important part nowadays in the inter interview. Whether you go for the startups or whether you go for the because writing the code is nowadays if you, uh, with Python's coming into the market even a. Uh, uh, fresher also can write the efficient programs and uh, not only you know the program which you have written or uh, using different loops number of loops he can write the efficient program so when when you are going as experience so you have to work on this skills also because python has uh, lessens your burden of thinking on the syntactical part a lot so you have to just think about the logic and how you can simplify the logic that is the most important thing so when you use two loops two like you know two nested loop so the complexity becomes n square here the complexity is n okay so this this is the preferred one if you can do that like if you will talk about complexity then you can write uh, you know six uh, print statement okay with like uh, five spaces here then one star then uh, uh, four spaces here then uh, two star like that but again you are increasing the number of lines okay so that is taking more space right so your space complexity is increasing so you have to think about both of them okay here you are reducing the time complexity complexity as well as space complexity so uh, that is the different part you as a data scientist don't have to bother about it because uh, it's not recommend uh, you know it's not it's not that much uh, important but yes but if you can do if you will practice over the time you will get this idea that how you can reduce the number of lines and number of loops Whenever you get some problem and if you have to solve it using some method, try to solve it using loop. That is one thing. Second thing, try to use less number of loops. Means nested loop. I'm not talking about, let's say, if you will use here another loop. After this, you will use another loop outside of this for loop. That is not a matter. That will become the 2n complexity. And 2n complexity is equivalent to n complexity. But if you will use inner loop, that will become n into n. That is becomes n square complexity. So that creates a problem for the interviewer. Okay, so uh, it depends on you whether you want to work on this. You can keep on working on this over the time. You will get it. Uh, anyone having any question in for loop while loop? No question. Okay. Fine then. So. We'll end the session here. We have completed till loop and whatever parts are left, the parts after this and even these parts also uh, will be covered in the normal classes when you will be going to the normal classes. So at least you'll be having a basic idea. I hope everyone is, uh, you know, have got some basic idea of Python, not everything, but yes, some basic idea you have got. And probably we will meet in the advanced topic. So if you have any doubt, any questions there uh, related to core Python, or advanced Python, you may ask me. Okay. Any question from anyone? Aniket, Bibu, Chatali, Nilu, Prem, Rahul. Uh, yes. Uh, hello. Yes. Uh, uh, when you write range and the list, uh, the, uh, the both are function or means. Uh, no, range, range is a function. Range is a function. And when you write list out of this, so that is also a function that is uh, you can you have int function complex function similarly for converting some data into the list you have list function but inside the list function there is a restriction that what all data you can pass inside list. 
Okay. A list is uh, uh, mutable, right? List is mutable. Then range is mutable or not? Range is immutable. It is a generator. It is immutable. Okay. Okay. Fine.